Good morning, church. So good to be with you. Welcome to my home via video message once again. Today actually marks our 20th video message. It's been a little over four months now, and I miss all of you terribly, and I can't wait for the day when we can gather once again. In the meantime, I hope these video messages have been, has been a blessing to you and to your family and to your friends. And I want to give a, a big mahalo, a big thank you to Raf Bakani. Raf is so talented and has been so faithful in producing these weekly video messages. So thank you, Brother Raf. And if you've missed an episode, I encourage you to check out our website where you can view past video messages. And the website is shown on the bottom of your screen. And by the way, my good friend Derek Williams, who lives in California, surprised me this past week and he refreshed our website. And so please check it out. And I hope you like the new look. Over the past four months, we've tried to share an encouraging message from the Word of God that's relevant for these uncertain times that we find ourselves in. But here's the thing. Knowledge is only beneficial when we put it into action. It has to be translated into action. What we learn has to move from our head to our heart and then to our hands. It, it is critical that we take action. It is important that we put it into practice. Do me a favor. Would you go and grab your Bibles and turn with me to Matthew chapter 7? And while you're turning there, let me set up the context for you. In Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, scholars call this the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is in Galilee, and there's a crowd of people that have gathered, that have assembled to hear Jesus teach. And so Jesus goes up on a mountainside, thus the Sermon on the Mount. He goes up on a mountainside so that his audience, everyone in the audience can see him. And then he begins to preach and he teaches on a range of subjects. He teaches on murder, adultery, divorce, prayer and fasting, giving to the needy, loving your enemies, not judging others. And in this one sermon, he, he, he shares this amazing message that's relevant and timely to the audience that's before him. But here's the thing, and I'll say it again. Knowledge has to be translated into action for it to be beneficial. What Jesus' audience has learned has to move from their head to their heart and then to their hands. They have to take action. It's critical that the knowledge that they receive be translated into action. It's important that they put it into practice. Jesus says it this way. Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24, is Jesus' concluding remarks to the Sermon on the Mount. This is, is his conclusion. This is Jesus speaking. Listen carefully. Jesus says this. Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose. The winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down. The streams rose. The winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. In this parable, there are two men. They both hear the word of God. But there's a vast, a huge difference between these two men. Both of them hear the word of God, but one of these men, he puts it into practice. The other, he does not put it into practice. The one who hears the word of God and 
puts it into practice. He is described as a wise man. He is described as a, a man whose house is built on good foundation, on the rock. The man who hears the word and does not put it into practice. He is described as a foolish man. He is described as a man whose house is built on poor foundation, built on sand. And for both of these men, Hurricane Douglas is a direct hit. Hurricane Douglas makes land fall and the rains come down. The Alawai Canal is flooded. The winds blow and beat against their house. And as soon as this storm system passes, FEMA and the Red Cross, they immediately respond. They go out and do a damage assessment. And they go to Mr. Wise Man's house. And they discover that his house remains standing because it has been built on good foundation. Then they go to Mr. Foolish Man's house. And unfortunately, his house is completely destroyed because it has been built on poor foundation. It is interesting to me that Jesus doesn't say that life will be stormless, that life will be storm-free. In this teaching, there's no option for a stormless life. There's no option for a storm-free life. Storms, namely trials and tribulations and hard times, are to be expected in life. That's just part of living in a world that's fallen, living in a broken world marred by sin until Jesus comes again, we will all experience storms in life. And now, when the storms of life come, and they will come, the rains will come down, the streams will rise, the wind will beat and blow against our life. And when the storms of life come, the question for us is, are we ready? Thank God that Hurricane Douglas missed us to the north. But it was a good drill for all of us. It was a good reminder for all of us that storm preparations have to be done ahead of the storm. A great reminder that storm preparations have to be done before the storm comes. You don't want to be on the road picking up gas or at the grocery store getting water and food and flashlights and batteries in the middle of a storm. By then, it's too late. This is also true with our spiritual life, with our spiritual preparation. The neat thing in this teaching is that we are all given fair warning. The weather forecast is that the storms of life will come. And Jesus says, prepare now. Prepare ahead of the storm. Prepare before the storm comes. Now is the time to build a good, solid, spiritual foundation in your life. How? And Jesus says, here's how. Be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. Learn from the word of God and then put it into practice. And it's usually the putting it into practice which is missing in our spiritual storm preparation. And so I, I'll say it again. We need to do something with the knowledge received. What we learn has to move from our head to our heart and then to our hands. There has to be action. It is critical that we do something with the knowledge received. It is important that we put it into practice. And so my encouragement for you this week, or maybe even homework for you this week, is maybe watch one or two of our past video messages and then don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Put it into practice. 
Matthew chapter 7, beginning in verse 24, Jesus' concluding words in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you and God bless your family.